Hello. Today, we're going to tie another great fly. <clears throat> this is another variant. Um, I call it the mini deceiver. Um, it's a small deceiver that I use for bass and panfish. It can also be used in salt water. I have a size 4 salt water hook. Just a standard hook. This one happens to be, I think, Gamagatsu. Yeah. Gamagatsu or Mustad. And I'm just using 3 0 monocord. White. I'm just going to wrap the shank with this. Um, and the variant of the deceiver, Lefty's deceiver, comes in at the tail where I use marabou instead of uh, hackle fibers, or, ha or not hackle fibers, actual f uh, feathers. You know, you, you tie in whole hackles. Um, I think the marabou provides more movement. I have a little marabou right here, and I'm just going to pinch off the ends level. And I'm just going to measure. You want the marabou to be about as long as the shank of the hook. And this is just a standard saltwater hook. You'll find them at most fly shops. And even bait shops now because these are very popular just to use for bait fishing. Okay, I'm going to zoom out just a little. So you can get that full scale. And next I have about 10 to 15 strands pearl crystal flash. I'm going to tie it in on my side first. I know you can't see this, but whenever I tie in crystal flash, I tie it on my side first. Uh, it just works better. And then I fold it over and trim it. And there you go, that's very simple. You got it in there. And uh, tidy up a little. Um, the body does not have to be smooth. I, you just want fully covered with thread. Um, what I'm actually do sometimes is I actually take like a Estaz or Cactus chenille. And I work on the body or I'll use Mylar tinsel. I mean, that's great, but just the original way of just a thread body, that is, that, that's all you need, and it works very well. It's a reverse taper, that's what I did. Now I'm just taking head cement, not super glue. Super glue, your uh, fingers would get stuck to the shank in the next process. You can very well use super glue, and then you'll just have to whip finish and take your fly out of the vise or leave it in the vise and let it uh, set up. Okay, next I'm taking bucktail. This is a bucktail one of many that I uh, tanned. Tanning bucktail is not very hard. Um, you know, this upcoming fall I'll try to make a video on how to tan a bucktail. Um, I also want to do a video on how to tan a squirrel and rabbit because all these materials are very useful and you know if you buy them from you know, Cabela's or your local fly shop you're going to be spending 10 bucks for a squirrel pelt and that, that that's ridiculous and I'll also try to teach you guys on how to dye because one, one, I, I do a lot of dyeing it's very simple and it's cheap and you can really customize your own colors. I know I, I'm sorry new to YouTube but uh, teach you guys what to do or what I've been doing. I know many of you do the same thing. You just don't make videos, you know. I just got a video camera so it's possible. Just tie this on the bottom, your white bucktail. make a nice little neat head and flip it right side up and you're going to grab your shark troops. Now, since I tanned my own bucktail, this is not, it's, it's a little darker chartreuse. I know on the camera it looks like a real bright chartreuse. 
it's not, it's a little darker. Um, because once again I dyed my own bucktail. Fortunately for this, you can see the bucktail is all curled up. That's what happens when I, this is one of the first times I taught, I dyed bucktail. But experience dyeing feathers and all that. Um, with the wet fly, I dyed that orange hackle. I bought a cheap, a cheap, you know, twenty dollar dry fly neck, and I dyed it orange. The reason I use dry fly is now I can use obviously use the lesser quality, and then I'll use the better quality for tying simulators and all the other those you know, small dry flies. Okay, I tied in my green and just building up a head. I tied the green on top. You want to make sure, you know, your white body is not showing. I mean, you'll see it, but you just don't want it overtly showing. Then you're just gonna do a couple whip finishes. I'm actually usually, you know, as you have you have. As you have seen, sorry, I got my uh, tongue stuck there. But as you have seen in other videos, um, I do three or four whip finishes. This one, you can only do one. You, you don't need that many. And this fly was a really quick tie. I mean, looking at the time, it took me like six minutes. Now, if I wasn't talking, I could get this done in four minutes or three minutes, no problem. Okay, next up is to grab some of these small eyes. Just take one off. Um, before you take it off, you want to have the cap off your super glue too. And one thing that helps is some of you may ask what type of super glue I use. Well, I actually have a big assortment. My favorite for putting on eyes is actually this Lodge Stock. Super gel, control gel. This is really good. It's like four to five dollars for one of these tubes, but <laughs> this stuff is awesome. It's not runny. It's a gel. I mean, you can see that it's a gel. It's a very useful gel. It dries white or a, you know an off white, or uh, dries clear or like a murky white or a little transparent. I would never use it for finishing off a head like I do a Zappa Gap, but for putting on these eyes, can't beat it. I just put the eyes right on the head. And I'm gonna stop the video now and I'll get my epoxy ready and that'll be part two of this series.